So Tom, you've had the preamble, you know of course of your stock's performance. Does what C3 AI actually does as a business justify the trading we've seen so far in 2023? Well, we, uh, C3 AI, I think is the world's leading provider of enterprise uh, AI, enterprise application software. And if you think that, um, that artificial intelligence is going, to is going to influence the enterprise in a big way, then I think this represents a just a staggeringly large uh, addressable market opportunity. Tom, it's interesting you bring that up because we've been speaking to some VCs who will say actually enterprise search is where they see real business model fit at the moment for the likes of ChatGPT. Just talk us through C3's generative AI for enterprise search. You're going to unveil it in March, I believe. What, what will it disrupt? Well, the C3i platform represents about a billion and a half dollars of software engineering that we apply to manufacturing, aerospace, utilities, oil and gas, what have you. Now, with the combination of enterprise search, natural language processing, generative AI, reinforcement learning, okay, and the C3i platform allows us to fundamentally change the nature of the human computer interaction model for these important enterprise applications. So this is a this is a huge development and it's brought a, you know a lot of attention to AI okay in the last couple of months as we've seen. Oh boy, hasn't it just? And a lot of that attention has fallen upon initially OpenAI, then it moved to Microsoft that did the deal with them, then it of course it's what Google or our parent Alphabet has us a bit up its sleeve. But what's so interesting with C3AI is you're kind of integrating all of those AI capabilities. You're using, if I'm right, OpenAI, Google, Academia. What do those sorts of deals look like? How do you combine all of the best learnings? We have close technology and market partnerships with Google, with Microsoft, and with AWS. So as they, you know, advance these technologies, as they will, okay, in the coming years, we're going to be able to immediately take advantage of all the innovations that they provide in our underlying core architecture and make those innovations available to our customers in our applications, make our applications much more efficacious, much easier to use, and so, this is, this, is a, this is a big development, and this could fundamentally change the nature of the human-computer interaction model for enterprise applications. This is, a, this is genuinely a big deal. Tom, I asked our audience on Twitter, on LinkedIn, before we came on the show, what they would ask you. And actually, to be fair, they just wanted to know what artificial intelligence competence does C3 have? And to be fair, I think you've answered that. But it raises a good question, right? When you think about year-to-date performance, your stock ticker is AI. And I just wonder what your take is on how much of the trading is just retail investors trying to buy in to find the next big thing in AI without missing the opportunity. Well, honestly, Ed, I don't really track the market that closely. Um, I think that you know we, we, we've seen a market correction since the, this huge technology bubble we had that had peaked, I think, about the first quarter of 2021. Um, I think with C3 AI, we've had a you know, dramatically uh, undervalued security. I think when this whole thing recovers, C3 AI will be, if not the, one of the world's leading providers of enterprise AI applications. And, um, you know, I think that presents a, I think we still have an undervalued security and this is going to be a very promising opportunity. Tom, noting that you've got more than $800 million on your balance sheet in terms of cash, will you take advantage in the run up of the share, of the share price? and? and sell any more shares? Um, no, I, I think we're, we're you know, we're, <clears throat> so our focus is on growing the top line rapidly. Our focus is on uh, and running a cash positive, profitable business, which we expect to be doing next year. Uh, I don't expect our cash balances at this time to go below $700 million in cash. So we're, in, we're very well capitalized. We're in a position to grow the business, advance the technology, Okay, and, and okay, and uh, deliver a cash positive, profitable business, growing at a at a very rapid rate. So I think about the time the Fed takes its foot off the brake, I think this company is going to be blowing and going, and uh, we're we're mm. between now and then we're just going to run the business. Will you look to inorganic growth, Tom? Because you're a man who knows M and A. In fact, your last business, of which you were founder, chairman, CEO, was bought by Oracle back in the day. You understand M and A more than most. Will you buy others? 
And it's see, and when we when I was CEO of Siebel Systems, I think we bought twenty or twenty three companies. I think it, uh, it we're focused. So, Caroline, it's a great question. We're focused on growing the business organically, and I think you know we invested over a billion and a half dollars in the technology foundation over a decade. Okay, we've done a lot of uh, of hard work here, and I think this is not going to be. You know, one of these Salesforce type stories or Oracle type stories. We're going to try to grow through acquisition. We're, we're, we we believe we have the technology foundation in place. We're going to grow the or the applicate the our technology footprint organically. We have 42 turnkey enterprise applications today for utilities, oil and gas, defense, aerospace, manufacturing. You can expect that to grow to hundreds of enterprise applications in the years to come. But, you know, I'm not saying, right. you know, never say never to an acquisition, but that, that that's not, uh, that's just not in the, in the, in, in a, it's not our focus right now. Tom, in terms of how you make money from artificial intelligence, you, you've kind of shifted, right, from subscription to consumption. And, and I'm curious about how that's worked out, the timing of it amid a boom of interest in artificial intelligence. I think the timing was perfect. Okay, and uh, you know we, we've seen a transition from first perpetual licensing to subscription licensing. Now it's clear that the licensing standard for the cloud, uh, for cloud computing, is consumption-based pricing. This is the way that Google does it, Microsoft does it, Amazon does it, Snowflake does it. Pretty much, this is the standard. This is the way the companies want to buy. They don't need to make big up front investments, they can pay as they go. And so it's, uh, we're finding it's being very, well, very, very well received by the marketplace, by our partners at Google and Microsoft and Amazon, uh, by our customers and by our prospects.